Hi everyone, welcome to Awesome Math. Today we'll be discussing the sum of the integers and its relationship to the Casimir effect. Let's we'll start with a statement. In quantum field theory, or QFT, one of the most basic predictions is that when you have two parallel metal plates separated by a small distance, even if the plates are uncharged, there's still a small repulsive force between them, known as the Casimir effect. Or two electrically neutral metal plates separated by a small distance We will call it epsilon. There is a very small repulsive force due to the Casimir energy. Which we will be calling E of epsilon, and the physical situation that we'll be considering is as follows. Two parallel plates, sorry I can't draw, two parallel plates, and the side view looks like this, distance epsilon. Okay, quantum field theory also tells us how to calculate this. It tells us that it's actually going to be equal to the sum of all the integers, or it's going to be pr proportional to this, obviously, since there have to, have to be units of energy. It tells us that this E sub epsilon is approximately the sum of the integers, and then it as follows. But wait, this is obviously infinite, since if we take one, add two, three, four, on and on and so forth, it's obviously going to be infinity, right? Well, this can't be the case, because energies have to be finite, and in this case, it's experimentally verified to be really small anyway, so this is just no good. We have to find some way to get rid of the infinity from the calculation and obtain a small, finite number. We do this by regularizing What this means is we change the sum by introducing some other parameter, which would be epsilon in this case, and then evaluating the sum using it, letting epsilon go to zero at the end, obtaining something equivalent to the initial sum. Did I realize? Yeah. Okay, so introduce a new parameter. Evaluate the sum. Let the parameter go to zero in the end. Okay, so in this particular case, we're going to be using a, a new sum sum of n equals zero to infinity of n times e to the minus epsilon n. Notice epsilon goes to zero, it becomes the initial sum. And from here, we just have to see how this helps us evaluate. All right, let's first recognize that we can write this sum as a derivative of a simpler sum in epsilon. This is going to be minus d by d epsilon sum of e to the minus epsilon n. If you can't see it right away, just start from the right and work left. We start up here, take an epsilon derivative, it brings in a minus n, so we just have to go ahead and put a minus n out front to accommodate for that. Notice, we can also write this as a geometric series. So we're going to be using the formula geometric series from high school 
to rewrite this as minus epsilon derivative of i equals zero to infinity e to the minus epsilon to the n now about the convergence we're not going to really worry about that here but just note that e to the minus epsilon is going to be small so we at least had a shot of this converging yeah should be okay even if it doesn't we don't really care because we're physicists we just use the formulas and see if it compares to ex experimental predictions so what if it if it doesn't converge all right so now we'll write this as epsilon derivative of one minus e to the minus epsilon got to keep track of these pesky minus signs here we're going to be applying the power rule i'm going to go ahead and write the minus sign that we had before so we can keep track of it power rule is going to introduce a new minus sign before we put this downstairs and, and square it so that's the old minus sign we got the new minus sign upstairs stuff in the denominator and then we're going to have stuff in the denominator squared per the power rule. This simplifies. These two minus signs cancel. This brings down another minus sign canceling with that. Overall sign is positive. Excellent. Now we're going to multiply top and the top bottom by e to the epsilon squared. To write finally, it's e to the epsilon over e to the epsilon minus 1 squared. Okay, from here, there are two ways to go. We can use Mathematica to go ahead and tell us what the sum is. Since we know what the power series for e to the something is, all we have to do is... So, we would start by... We would start by writing the Taylor series for E up here. We would subtract 1 and square it down here, work to some order of our choice. But then we have to polynomial long divide, which, you know, it's not that bad, but I don't want to do it. So I'm just going to use Mathematica to tell us that it's going to be... Yeah, actually, equal sign was okay. To explain this in a Taylor series, it's going to be... 1 over epsilon squared minus 1 12 plus epsilon squared over 240 plus higher order terms in epsilon. We're not, not quite done yet. Now we have to let epsilon go to zero since we've used it to evaluate the sum. And just for clarity, let's go ahead and erase this and put this back here where it belongs. This is approximately 1 over epsilon squared minus 1 12th plus epsilon squared over 240, right? And we're going to let epsilon go to 0 now. Comes 1 over epsilon squared minus 1 12th. Great, but we still have the infinity here. This tells us that the sum is equal to infinity minus a 12th. Isn't that still infinity? We haven't really done anything at all. Well, Actually, we have, and the minus 1 12th is going to be the important bit. Why? Quantum field theory also tells us, and just ordinary mechanics in general will tell us, but it's, it's going to be very useful here, that only energy differences are physically meaningful. You must compare the energy of the system you have to some other system to even know what you're talking about when you say energy. It tells us that only energy differences are meaningful. Well, what other energy do we have to compare this to? I mean, as far as we know here, we just have the two parallel plates, nothing else in sight. Well, there is something else. The vacuum is still around. And in quantum field theory, the vacuum also has energy, and it's actually quite large, infinite actually. So we have the, the vacuum energy, which we're calling E naught to be equal to a doubly infinite expression. We have integral of d cubed x 
integral of b cubed k over 2 pi cubed times 1 half h bar k. Now, this looks intimidating, but it's not. What it really says is that you take the harmonic oscillator, you sum over all of its energies, which is, which is pretty much what we did here in the first place, but now you have to sum over all the possible positions in space where you could put a harmonic oscillator. So it's doubly infinite, or infinity squared, or you can write this as 1 over a small number squared. Now we can see how these might cancel out. So let's go ahead and consider delta e to be e of epsilon minus e naught. And this is just 1 over epsilon squared minus 1 twelfth minus 1 over epsilon squared. And celebrating epsilons cancel out just equal to minus 1 twelfth, the same famous one you've seen in many other videos. Number file in particular is the most popular one. They use the zeta function realization. We just chose the, the exponential one here since it's simpler. And that's basically the gist of the proof. We've shown what we wanted to show. I just want to tell you a few caveats. So number one, if you look in a quantum field theory textbook, this is not how they're going to show you that the infinities cancel out. They're actually going to consider three parallel plates, look at the forces between them, subtract those forces, and then we're going to see the infinities canceling out in that way. We just considered energy, but this is a more heuristic example of how the energies can cancel out. And if you want to see more, I mean, definitely check out a quantum field theory textbook, but also keep, subs keep subs subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll, I'll see you next time.